Welcome to the Life and Works of Jose Rizal. Are you ready for our first lesson? If you are, all you need to do right now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's start with the warm-up activity. Please answer this question. How are laws made? You have 10 seconds to answer my question. Your time starts now. Time's up. If you answered the following words, bill, legislative process, and the Congress of the Philippines, then you are on the right track. If you can still remember from your previous lessons in high school, a bill undergoes steps before it is enacted into a law. Here are the following steps. Step 1. Passing the bill. Step 2. First reading. Step 3. Second reading. Step 4. Third reading. Step 5. Transmittal of the approved bill to the counterpart house. Step 6. Bicameral conference committee. Step 7. Transmittal of the approved bill to the President of the Philippines. Now you might be wondering, why are we talking about laws? That's because in this video, we are going to talk about Lesson 1, the making of the Rizal Law. The Life and Works of Jose Rizal is a unique course because it is based on a Philippine Legislative Act that was passed and approved by the Congress of the Philippines. This legislative act is known as Republic Act No. 1425 or the Rizal Law. Just like the other laws of the Philippines, it also went through the same procedures that we have discussed in our review. It first became a bill known as Senate Bill No. 438 or the Rizal Bill, which Senator Claro M. Recto filed on April 3, 1956. The said bill is one of the most controversial legislative measures. It instigated an intense debate between the proponents, Senators Recto and Laurel, and those who opposed the bills, Senator Rodrigo, Rosales, and Cuenco. Now, why is the result bill controversial? To answer this question, let's take a closer look at the salient features of the result bill. Under the bill, it shall be obligatory for college and university students to study the unexpurgated or original versions of Rizal's two famous novels, The No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo. Thus, the opposition claimed that Rizal bill as anti-Catholic because according to them, the two novels of Rizal contain passages that were anti-Catholic. They believe that it might affect the religious beliefs of the students and violate their constitutional freedom of religion and conscience. The church continued its opposition to the bill by conducting seminars, reading pastoral letters and masses, and urging the Catholic voters to vote out the lawmakers who supported the Rizal bill. They also threatened to close down the Catholic schools if the bill was approved. Senator Clara Recto calmly answered the threat by indicating that the schools would be nationalized if that happened. He also denied Senator Rodrigo's proposal to use annotated or altered copies of the Noli Mitangere and El Filibusterismo instead of the unexpurgated version. To further demonstrate the Catholic Church's opposition to the result bill, they circulated a pastoral letter urging all Catholics to oppose it. The Catholic Church asked some priests to submit drafts for the pastoral letter. Two of them were Father Horacio de la Costa and Father Jesus Cavana. The original draft of the pastoral letter was written by Father Horacio de la Costa that was made before the passage of the Rizal Bill. There were five drafts in de la Costa's pastoral letter. All contained passages of the original draft but with some notable alterations. Schumacher 2013 compared the 1952 pastoral letter prepared by Father Horacio de la Costa with the 1956 statement written by Father Jesus Cavana. His analysis revealed that there is a significant difference between Father de la Costa's and Father Cavana's drafts. In the original draft prepared by Father de la Costa, there was no hint of hatred towards Rizal or his works. De La Costa argued that Rizal's criticism was directed to the abuses of the church representatives and not the Catholic Church itself. 
He even added that Rizal novels are not a threat to the Catholic Church and suggested that it should be made familiar to the students because of its moral teachings. On the other hand, the draft written by Father Cavana viewed Rizal's novels as an explicit attack against the Catholic Church. To know more about this topic, let's take a closer look at the analysis made by Schumacher 2013 on the five drafts. First, Draft A. The original draft that contained 20 typewritten pages. In this draft, Rizal was granted a moral role. Second, the draft B. Another copy of A, but with a few handwritten changes. Third, draft C. Contains changes in copy B, but the original text of the passages in the draft was deleted. Simple reference notes were used in place of endnotes. Fourth, draft D. A shortened version of C that contains only five pages with an additional paragraph. Last is draft E. An identical copy of C, the revisions indicated by De La Costa are present in both copies. It is believed that Father Cavana, the author of the bishop's final letter, used draft C and copied the first five pages of it as an introduction before making his attack on the novels. In this draft, Rizal is depicted as a political and social reformer only. His moral role was also denied. Finally, the official bishop's letter came out on April 21, 1956, which was entirely written by Father Cavana. Now to end the debates, Jose P. Laurel drafted and proposed an amended version of the Rizal Bill on May 9, 1956. In the amended version, he deleted the word compulsory reading of Rizal's novels and added that his other works must be included in the subject. However, he remained his stand on the unexpurgated versions of the novels. Senator Roseller Lim and Emmanuel Palaez also proposed several amendments to the substitute bill. Finally, on June 12, 1996, the Compromise Bill was signed into law by President Ramon Magsaysay and became Republic Act No. 1425. Let's take a closer look at the Rizal Law. What you're seeing right now is the full name of RA 1425. The Act aims to accomplish the following goals. First, rededication to the ideals of freedom and nationalism for which our heroes live and died. Second, honor the heroes, particularly the national hero and patriot, Jose Rizal. Third, Jose Rizal's life, works, and writings, particularly his novels No Limitangere and Il Filibusterismo, should be instilled in the minds of young people. And last but not the least, develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and to teach the duties of citizenship. Let's move on to Section 1. It talks about requiring all public or private schools, colleges, and universities in all curricula to teach the life and works of Jose Rizal, particularly his novels No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo. This is the main reason why you're taking up this subject right now. Section 1 also states that the original or unexpurgated editions of the No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo shall be used in reading the said novels. The objections of the Catholic Church were also addressed in the second paragraph of Section 1. It allows students to be exempted from reading results work if reading the novels would ruin their faith. However, it must be stated in a sworn written statement. Take note that it does not exempt the student from taking up the Rizal course. Let's move on to Section 2. All schools, colleges, and universities are required to keep in their libraries the original and unexpurgated editions of the No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo, as well as Rizal's other works and biography. Next. Section 3 of the law mandates that the No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo, as well as the other writings of Jose Rizal, shall be translated into English, Tagalog, and principal Philippine dialects. It shall also be printed in cheap and popular editions and be distributed free of charge to those persons who desire to read them through the Purok organizations and Baryu Council throughout the country. 
Let's move on to the implementation of RA 1425. Some professors of the Eastern Visaya State University conducted a study entitled The Implementation of RA 1425 in the LGU. This study was conducted to find out the implementation of the Rizal Law to the 13 barangays within the downtown area of the club and city. It had the following objectives. First, to assess whether Section 3 of RA 1425 is observed. Second, to look into the Barangay Council's response to the law. Third, to evaluate the programs of the barangays and the Sangguniang Kabataan programs, projects, and activities alignment to the objectives of RA 1425. Now, here are the results of the study. First, Majority of the council members were not aware of RA 1425. Second, each barangay had its own programs, both the Barangay Sangunian and Sangguniang Kabataan. However, the programs being implemented at the barangay level were based on the identified priority programs by the local government. Third, the study also revealed that 11 out of 13 barangays had no library. Most of the council members were also not aware that Section 3 of RA 1425 mandates that every barangay or unit in the municipality or city must have in their library a copy of the two books of Dr. Jose Rizal. Thus, the researchers recommended the following things. First, there is a need for reorientation of RA 1425 at the barangay level. Second, each barangay should have a library with the two novels of Jose Rizal. Third, the objectives of RA 1425 specifically on developed moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and to teach the duties of the citizenship should be emphasized in their priority programs of the city. Fourth, there is a need to review and revisit the Rizal course content and pedagogy and its relevance and applicability to the community. Fifth, design an extension program and activities addressing the gap between the application of the RA 1425 in the school and in the community, such as first, team building, second, technical writing skills training, third, community service activities, and last, promote activities that would highlight moral development. Now this is a challenge to you, my dear students, because you represent the leaders, workers, and professionals of the future. You have the power to help in the implementation of Rizal Law and the improvement of the Philippine society. The future of our country lies in your hands. Use it and make Dr. Jose Rizal proud of you. That's it for RA 1425 or also known as the Rizal Law. Before I end this video, here is a fan fact. Did you know that Dr. Jose Rizal is not our official national hero? Yes, you've heard it right. According to the National Commission for Culture and Arts, no law, executive order, or proclamation declaring any Filipino historical figure and national hero has been enacted or issued. If that's the case, how did Rizal become a hero? The National Commission for Culture and the Arts explained that Rizal's hero status was made because of the public acclamation and recognition of his contribution to the country. In addition, the National Historical Institute, presently known as National Historical Commission, prescribed the passage of 50 years before a person is confirmed as a hero. If the person is still admired after that time, he is regarded as a hero. In the case of Rizal, he just turned 160 years old last June 19, 2021, and the Filipinos continue to honor and support his ideals. The former president Fidel V. Ramos also attempted to proclaim a national hero through Executive Order No. 75, which created the National Heroes Committee. The committee's main responsibility is to study, evaluate, and recommend Filipino national personages, heroes, and due recognition of their sterling character and remarkable achievements for the country. Furthermore, on June 3, 1993, the Technical Committee of the National Heroes Committee adopted the following criteria for national heroes. First, Heroes are those who have a concept of nation and thereafter aspire the struggles for the nation's freedom. 
Second, heroes are those who define and contribute to a system or life of freedom and order for a nation. Freedom without order will only lead to anarchy. Third, heroes are those who contribute to the quality of life and destiny of the nation. Additional criteria was also added by the Technical Committee of the National Heroes Committee on November 15, 1995. First, a hero is a part of the people's expression. But the process of a people's internalization of a hero's life and works takes time with youth forming a part of the internalization. Second, a hero thinks of the future, especially the future generations. Third, the choice of a hero involves not only the recounting of an episode or events in history, but of the entire process that made this particular person a hero. Based on Dr. Onofre de Corpus and Dr. Alfredo Lagmai's criteria, the Technical Committee of the National Heroes Committee recommended nine Filipino historical figures to be national heroes. These are Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio, Emilio Aguinaldo, Apolinario Mabine, Marcelo Del Pilar, Sultan Di Batuan Kudarat, Juan Luna, Melchora Aquino, and Gabriela Sela. However, no action has been taken on implementing these recommendations. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.